Okay, we're going to talk about a couple different things in this video, but our primary focus is going to be how did they attach uh, C ration cans or bean cans or sometimes beer cans to the sides of M60s in Vietnam. I know a couple different people on YouTube made videos on this, some really good ones, but we're going to make one anyway. We're going to talk about some other things too, but that's going to be our primary focus. So on the bench here, we have two M60s, which would have been found in Vietnam. We have an M60D door gun, and we also have a standard ground uh, configuration gun. Of course, they also used uh, M60C coaxials on the uh, aircraft, I'm sorry, on armor, and um, the M60Cs on aircraft, which this really wouldn't be applicable for because those are fixed mounted guns. So <clears throat> the two primary types of M60s that we would have seen in Vietnam is our standard issue ground gun and our D. Um, this is what, when we go through video and pictures of our guys in Vietnam using these guns that we saw these bean cans on, or sea ration cans. Um, so how did they attach them and why? All right. So if you look at these two guns here, they are both set up exactly how you would find them in Vietnam. These are all original Vietnam era parts. Um, and there's nothing on this that isn't authentic and original to that time period. And you can see that both of these have an M60D or feed chute mounting bracket, magazine bracket, whatever you want to call it on them. That's how every single M60 was issued for the most part in Vietnam. Here's one that's not attached to the gun for reference. These were riveted to the side of the receiver with four rivets. If you look at the back of this, you can see the four rivet holes. So when these guys got these guns over there, these were riveted to the side. There was no taking them off. They were part of the gun. Um, and some of the issues encountered with both these types of guns was these belts, if you don't have something there, can catch and breaks the belts. I've personally experienced that myself while shooting in this configuration, and it was just something that happened. Um, so that leads us to the question of why are these brackets on this gun? Well, there was two purposes um, for this bracket. For the M60D, it was to attach feed chute to. All right. We're gonna come over here for reference. And here we have an M60D, and you can see that, um, sorry, I'm trying to work this camera here. We can see the feed chute is attached to it here. And it comes out of a 400 round ammo magazine and attaches to the side of the gun, and it's hooked up to that bracket. Now let's go back over. So for the M60D, that was the purpose of the bracket. Feed chute, quick attach to it. For this standard ground gun, there was two options that were, were made uh, for our guys that specifically used this bracket. And they were these two ammo magazines right here. So this is a heavy canvas one, probably the first design ever made really heavy, this thing. And then this is a lightweight like jungle one that is uh, made from vinyl rubber and um, keeps the water out. So the intended purpose of the magazine bracket was for quick attaching these magazines. So I'll just put one on here. We'll show you how it works. So if you, you have your bracket on the side of the gun, you lift your lever. And it snaps in. And as you can see, it's like locked in there. These two lips hold it on the top and then these levers clamp it to the side. So that would be mounted to the side of your M60 to feed it, right? 
The problem with this is these are bulky and they're not real, I wanna say they're not real practical. And I think that's backed up by the fact that you probably can't find a single picture except very early on during the Vietnam War where anyone is using these magazines, okay? So that leaves the grunts and the air crews with uh, a gun with a magazine bracket on it that isn't very efficient for what they're doing. And I should mention too, for the door guns, the feed chute also was not efficient. Very hard to clear jams with feed chute on. It's extra uh, drag on the belt coming into the gun. So for combat efficiency, those feed chutes were not good and almost all these guys pulled these off, pulled the feed chutes off, I'm sorry, so that they were just running the gun like this. Now, you have the gun with this bracket on the side. Again, we run into this issue of what we discussed is belts hang straight down out of this um, feed tray and it drags over this magazine bracket and there's just a lot of stuff on these that get that can get caught especially if you're in an aircraft right when i when i shoot these without anything on it like if i'm leaning forward and the rounds can't and catch one of these it just breaks the belt off so you you obviously can't have that happen in combat or you know it could obviously create issues that's that goes without saying so someone at some point somewhere in vietnam um, had some time on their hands and said, how can we alleviate this issue of belts breaking and the, you know, the weapon becoming inefficient on combat missions? And they figured out that this can, which is a B3 unit made in 1964, so this is original, fits perfectly into the magazine bracket, feed chute mounting bracket. The can has uh, lips on the edge which as you can see these levers lock onto and it's a quick release too so again let's just watch this see how it snaps and locks in there we'll put this on the gun for reference it's effortless to do it snaps right in there and locks in place. That is not coming off of there. You know, you might have the question, well, what about in combat? Is this gonna come off or, you know, is, is it going to hold up on there? Which we obviously know the answer to since these were used in combat. And then what you have is this perfect radius to feed the ammunition into the gun over the can and, um, zero chances of uh, it uh, getting hung up on the side of the gun in the hangar. So it wasn't just on the uh, door guns that this was used, you know, obviously word spread that this was a very efficient way to uh, uh, improve uh, consistency on the guns. So we do see grunts on the ground also using them. And uh, it wasn't as common on the ground because this is a lot, you know, hanging off the side, that's, that's a lot of uh, I don't know, extra distance off the gun. And it's also um, some extra weight. So, uh, but we did see them used on ground. Uh, One thing is for sure, these magazines did not get used. And, you know, we're going to cue in photographs here from throughout the war, like I mentioned. Most grunts would choose to wrap the belt around the, the gun on the top and uh, just deploy it like that, you know, with nothing on the side. All right, now, I'm, uh, I was just yelling because I couldn't, uh, there's too much ordinance going on. Uh, you were taking the first shot, was taking heavy ground fire. And I have seen some of these pictures from Vietnam where they ripped these levers off the sides of the bracket. Like they took them off and then they ground these down so that this was just a smooth surface too. So that was pretty much for the duration of the Vietnam War. Um, 
during the Vietnam War, the government developed and came out with this uh, ammo hanger. So this hangs on the side of the feed tray and it sits on the side of the gun and it helps feed the ammunition into the gun without uh, the, any possibility of the belt getting hung up. It also, you can hang a bandolier on it. But I've never seen a single photograph of one of these used in Vietnam. We have some here in stock and they are, they're dated like 1970. So we know they were around during the war. I've just never seen them used. And it may have just been too late in the war at that point for that. So, you know, in it, again, in, in addition to these sea rat cans, we saw a lot of beer cans and different stuff. And, and what it is, what it comes down to is combat ingenuity of these guys on the ground uh, wanting to make their, their weapon systems more effective and efficient. So that's how these are attached to the M60. Um, if you have a gun with a magazine bracket like this, we get these C ration cans on eBay every now and then. You gotta make sure they're still sealed though, otherwise the can will crush. But they're still out there and it's cool because this is made in 64. And you know, this on here is exactly how you'd see this in Vietnam. So that's it, just a brief video on how these various uh, cans and magazines attach to these. As always, um, thank you everyone who watches this channel and who supports our business, beltfeds.com. Um, it's been life changing. I, I can't emphasize enough how grateful I am uh, for everyone that supports us. And it all started here on YouTube when we just started getting videos out, information out, you know, 12, 13, 14 years ago. So that's it. Thanks guys. See ya.